Hello again and welcome to the second part of the Amiga Tank Mouse Laser Upgrade video. The first part ended with me needing to contact Jesus to explain my dilemma of uh, his nice board not fitting my model of Tank Mouse and my directly soldered wires with no connector. Jesus uh, kindly sent me this diagram you are seeing at the moment which shows how to wear up a standard DB9 connector to his laser upgrade board. I will leave it a bit on screen, but uh, we, Phase 101, will make a soft copy available on our Facebook group page in case you need a personal copy to do the same modifications I'm doing to my tank mouse to get this lovely board to fit my non-compatible tank mouse case. So today we're going to start wiring up this new board, at least to check that it works before I modify the mouse casing. And uh, as this requires a specific type of connector, which I didn't have, but luckily I have um, some IC bases which fit perfectly over it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to split one of these bases and suddenly I've got the connector I need wow so let's start wiring this according to uh, the diagram that TSU sent okay so as you can see here we need one two three four five six seven eight pins and luck would have it that I have a bit of flat ribbon cable here that is 10 core so all we need to do is keep 8 and remove 2 and there we have our whoopa, required 8 cables Right, we've had to put a bit of scotch tape on these because they kept falling out and I don't want that. So now let's start stripping our wires. Right, so first of all, I uh, remembered that I was calling this guy wrongly because Jesus in Spanish is the J is an H, so it's Jesus. Sorry for that. And Jesus kindly sent me this diagram, which we're going to follow to, uh, to wire our mouse. First time, we're going to do something of a uh, do not try this at home because we're going to wire it without soldering it and we're going to wire it to an old DB9 cable which is right here which has the required 8 cables, 8 wires to fit on the board designed by Jesus right um, and then, if everything is okay, we will try to uh, fit it into our tank mouse. As you can see from this diagram, so from the board, pin 1 goes to pin 9 of the DB9, which is the serial connection, 9 pin. 2 goes to 6, 3 to 1, 4 to 3, blah 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 blah. 1, is, uh, one and 2 seem to be the left and right mouse buttons. So uh, when you press the switch, you put pin 1 of the board to ground and we'll see if the board works well. At least we'll see that it powers up and then we'll do the final part to fit it in the tank mouse case. Let's go. Pin 1 on the laser upgrade board upgrade is on the right hand side, as you can see here, there's a very small number 1 there. 
And we're going to match that with the ribbon cable number one. So we're going to start from the right side. And go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we'll match it with the pin numbers according to the wires connected on the DB9 connector. Okay, in this case, uh, pin one of the mouse board goes to pin nine of the DB9, which we have found out that it is the gray cable. And this is the part where you do not try this at home. But since this is only a temporary fix, we're going to do it this way. I only want to see that uh, the board at least powers up and that there's maybe some motion so it's detected as a mouse. And then we'll do the proper way with soldering and stuff. By the way, unless um, I'm getting it wrong, on the DB9 connector, which you can see here, Mm, pin one is this. You can see the group, the shape of the uh, five pins, four pins. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So for now we use pin nine, and we use pin six. Now for pin number three, we're going to use pin one, which is supposed to be this one on the DB9 connector. Okay. Okay, we are left with one unused cable from the DB9 connector, which is supposed to be pin 5, which on the diagram is the only pin on the DB9 that is not going to be used. Let us confirm that pin 5 is the yellow cable. If we get a beep, yeah, we got a beep. So we confirm that this cable, the yellow one, which is pin 5 on the DB9, is not going to be used. Since this one isn't going to be used, we might as well cut it off to avoid any chance of shorting. So now we have uh, basically the mouse connected, the cable that will go onto the mouse connected eight wires to the DB9. Pin 5 of the DB9 is the only one which is not going to be used. I'm going to separate these and put some insulation so I do not get a short while testing and we'll see if the board lights up as it should. As you can see there's haphazard way of my separating cables on a piece of duct tape. All the cables seem to not be touching each other so there should be no short circuits. Let's try the board on the Amiga. Okay, so now we plug pin one, which was pin one of the ribbon cable, into pin one of the board, which is exactly a very nice fit. Remember, this is only a temporary test. That is why I'm doing this so in such a crude way. Okay, we've hooked up the board to the Amiga, as you can see it here. And although at the moment you cannot see it, I'm moving the board. And at least I have movement in the XY direction. There's only left, right. There's no up and down movement, but uh, the mouse button also work. So I know at least that the board is alive. And well, this is not the ideal setup, of course. It's just a crude mess that I created as a test. But it works. I was just going to demonstrate to you the, what little movement I got on this screen. Oh no, yeah, yeah, we got movement. Again, X, Y movement only. We do not have any up and down, but we also confirmed that the mouse buttons are working. There. Uh, mouse button is working. Network. I know. So, last part of the video now will be how we're going to actually fit the board inside my non 
um, compatible mouse case. Right, so for the last part of this video, um, I'm probably going to make some of you retro aficionados cry because I'm going to modify this incompatible mouse case. I'm going to destroy it in a way a bit to make it compatible with this laser board. As you can see, if I put the laser board where it fits almost snugly, but then and it would almost be aligned with the switches. Oops, sorry. But then if we look at the bottom, I don't know if it can be seen clearly. Whoop. Well, the laser is whoop, very far away and it won't certainly do its job. So we're going to have to lower the board a bit. And in order to do that, we also have to align it with this one hole here. And since it has to go down, these pillars, both of these pillars have to go. And it's got to go as low as possible so that the laser lens aligns with the bottom of my mouse. So, start shedding tears, boys and girls, because soon this mouse case will be no longer. <laughs> okay. So, we'll up and pop on. It's already better. The laser is aligned with the hole, but it's still very far away from the hole. So, this will have to go on deeper. I'm sorry, baby. This will have to go too. And let's see how it fits now. We've just removed two pillars. This one other board support. There were two uh, other pieces of plastic here also removed. Otherwise, it's still intact, and let's see how it fits now. Hmm, it doesn't move. Good. And look at that fit of the laser. That is... Well, it looks perfect. No space. Good, so now all we have to see is how to get the buttons aligned before we wire it up and put it on the Amiga because as you can see the buttons although they line up with the switches the buttons align perfectly with this part of the buttons so we're going to design something that fits in here is higher than this and that clicks our buttons Right, so we're going to take a few measurements here. Uh, so we need something that is right, 11, 11 millimeters wide and whoopa, and approximately 12. So 11 by 12, let's do it 11 by 11. It's a perfect square, perfect square, slanted angle, cylinder, and the button clicker. Let's go. Okay, so now let's measure the angle at, that we'll have to make that device to be perfectly aligned. And that's another the angle must be approximately 11 degrees. Good. Right, so uh, here as you can see, um, I have started doing the design according to the measurements I took previously. Um, I'm translating it into a CAD design, 3D design, which will then be printed, uh, 3D printed using PLA, probably, because it's the easiest material to work with. 
and it doesn't need to be aesthetically nice or anything it just must do a simple job to click a button and it will be hidden inside the tank mouse so uh, there isn't any issue of the PLA being exposed to light because it's biodegradable stuff like that it will be inside the case so there shouldn't be any problems with it lasting ages Okay, so as you can see, I have already uh, started the part that will go, the slanting part above, that will uh, cube, that will be fixed to the underside of the mouse button, and I am adding the cylinder and the, let's say, click clicker disk, that will uh, do the actual uh, uh, micro switch clicking. Um, well, while I was doing this design, I actually realized that this column and uh, the clicker disk that I was adding was superficial, well, extra complexity I didn't need, so as you can see, um, <laughs> I, <laughs> while designing the desi this, this thing, I revised my thinking, and instead of... Um, a uh, narrow column and that click disc I decided to do the whole cylinder disc it doesn't do any difference and it makes it even stronger just in case you want to bash the mouse which I hope you don't and uh, well basically this was so simple this was as you can see done almost in real time it took me only a few minutes um, well I think it speeded up but <laughs> it only took about 10 minutes I think and this will be this design will be exported into an STL, which is a standard uh, way of representing 3D models. And uh, well, we'll put this STL into our uh, slicing software. Uh, just in case you wonder, I use um, a Simplify 3D. As you can see, I fired up my uh, slicer. I'm importing the STL into this slicer teeny teeny piece um, exactly the shape we need to be fixed on the underside of the mouse button now we'll cut this up in layers I mean the slicer will do it for us we just position it in place and then we produce the g-code for the 3d printer to produce a physical copy of my design You can see that I'm having um, to avoid certain problems with support in 3D printing. I've put the actual design upside down to use as minimal support as needed, which uh, I hope will be easily removable so as not to have to sp spend too much time cleaning up the, the actual print <coughs> to get it uh, in a nice clean usable shape okay so we're doing some settings uh, to modify how uh, the parameters the printer will have certain parameters like temperature the infill of the model because it won't be hollow from the inside it but it will not use a lot of plastic because we will make a structure inside to make it strong although it's not really needed but it's a nice thing to have here's the sliced uh, part we're going to see how it looks uh, how it will look once printed right so then what we have to do is export this uh, sliced design into g-code upload it to the printer fire off the printer and uh, watch it come to life as you are seeing on the screen at the moment ah, okay so here is the 3d print that has just come fresh of the 3d printer the part that we have just designed uh, about an hour ago the this is the beauty of 3D printing for such a simple part. All I needed was 10 minute design. 
bit of measurements and a 3D print. Now let's see how it's going to fit in our mouse. We're going to temporarily fix it just for this test with, uh, <clears throat> with some double-sided tape. So this will go here. Cheep, cheep. Perfect fit, and we have extended our mouse button so that it should now reach uh, the micro switch, which was too far away and not aligned with the previous mouse uh, well extension button extension. Let's see. So let's see how this fits in this mouse. Mm -hmm. So this is the one without the extension. And this is the one that is now clicking the micro switch. You can hear the click. And I managed to get the measurements right the first time. That's very unusual. <laughs> so let's print another and then let wire up everything and it will be over. This is what I designed. Got just a bit of a slant to match the mouse button so that it will be straight on top of the micro switch and click it. Okay, so we've finally arrived to well, almost the end of this video. Um, as I showed you in the previous segment, I had designed and printed uh, this mouse extension button extension so that it aligns perfectly with the micro switches on the new board as you can see if I put the mouse in place probably you will see that now they align perfectly both from this side and from well it's not very visible from here but I can assure that they align so I printed another one of the pieces that I designed um, I've glued it with uh, hot glue, with a glue gun. I've also done the same with the laser mouse board since I had to cut off the previous pillars that held the previous uh, uh, guts of the mouse and we didn't have the pillar that was here aligned with the hole and that the board was too high. We needed it a bit lo much lower instead of up here. We needed it down there. So I widened the hole on the PCB with a normal driller, but I had checked beforehand that I would not be cutting any traces. So I made sure that when I widened, I would only be cutting this piece, which looked like, a, uh, like it is a, a ground plane. And against the light, it showed that there were no nearby traces that would be cut. Um, and I widened the PCB hole by about a millimeter. And as you can see, the board, the board now fits perfectly, but I couldn't screw it in, so I had to hot glue it in also. I hope it doesn't fail before a long, long time. But even with then, with hot glue, it's very easy to remove with, because although it has a strong bond, it still remains a bit soft, and you can easily insert a knife into the glue which is visible here okay and there's some glue also under this board and it can be removed without damaging the board i've done it several times on different equipment and uh, i know if you're going to do want a strong bond but do not want to risk damaging the board if you want to remove it i would recommend this kind of soft glue like hot glue from a glue gun and so now we've got these two pieces, we've got the board ready, fitted in place, perfect laser placement. We've got these two mouse extensions that will fit over the micro switches. The final piece is our test cable that we used before. And uh, I'm going to use this again after this test. Obviously I will wear it up properly, I will do proper soldering instead of uh, just <laughs> separating the the parts with uh, duct tape, but duct tape is good for every test. 
And, uh, well, pin one, we set from the right to the left, from this, this way. So, okay, so we put this temporarily inside the mouse, we stuff it. Uh, obviously, we have to keep clear of the micro switches, so this goes in the middle. We assemble the mouse temporarily as a single piece. I'm not even going to screw it down yet. And there we have the assembled mouse, lasered mouse, with micro switches, with a serial cable, the D-type serial cable. So the Amiga will think it still got, well, it will have a serial mouse, but the actual data, instead of coming from the old roller ball and rollers mechanism, now it will be coming from this laser bouncing around and changing position. Also, the mouse is much lighter because look how much we took out that and the ball. And the only things that we put back in were just these two pieces of plastic and this teeny weeny board, which is like nothing compared to this 35 or 34 year old year monster that we had. So, mouse, welcome to century 21. Let's see. You can see we have these satisfying micro switch noises, which, but at least, which at least tell me that the design I did for the button extension is working because it's resting, almost resting. Look, there's a millimeter of uh, play about, and then it's the click of the micro switch. The other side, there's less clearance. Maybe the amount of glue I put in or something was a bit more, but it's, it's, I mean, it's already resting, it seems, on the switch. There's no clearing like this, but it still works fine, at least from a clicking point of view. Now for the actual test on a real hardware Amiga. And there's Vampire Amiga, Vampire Miggy going up. Mouse waiting in anticipation. And what is it going to Oh, there we have full movement. Ooh. Full movement there. So let's see. Left mouse button. Right mouse button. And ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome my tank mouse to the 21st century, as well as my naked and vamped Amiga. That's all folks, hope you find the video interesting. If you have a mouse like mine and have to do the same type of modifications, I hope you find the video useful. For everyone else, I hope you found the video at least interesting. Uh, in a retro way. That's all for now. Relic Interface 101 signing off. Bye.